Hi, this is Artsy Wisdom. My name's Diane. Thank you for coming by. I love that you wanted to visit my channel. Hopefully you'll find something of value here. Um, <clears throat> today I'm looking into some political things, also some global images, some predictions about some debates that may be in our future. Ireland popped into my head and so I wanted to share with you the images I got with that. I don't no idea why. Um, and maybe you guys can help me understand that. For those of you who have not been here before, I see images, foods, desserts, um, just random things that that spirit shares with me um, to help me decipher the situation. And that's what I do. And I'm an artist, so I kind of, I don't know if that's my perspective too, but it all comes together. And plus I like to eat and cook and bake. Anyway, so some viewer had also asked me about Google and now that they've been, um, there's a lawsuit against their monopoly of the search engine world. So I looked into that. Um, the DNC is next week. The And the Mercury is retrograde. So I was thinking that may affect some of the situation there. It was different than I thought, but I'll share those images with you there. Um, there's also supposed to be a debate October 1st between... J.D. Vance and Tim Walls. I looked at that to see if it was going to happen and what was going to occur and how Trump is feeling with J.D. Vance or how he's doing around Trump. And also, if Harris does actually debate Trump in the future, they say they're supposed to debate, what is it, September 10th maybe? Um, anyway, I looked into that and I'll tell you what I saw. Very interesting. And then there's a Senate race in Arizona between uh, Carrie Lake and Ruben Gallego. She lost in the the race for governor last election against uh, Katie Hobbs, but she's in it to win it. She's a go-getter, so she wants to go and get a Senate seat and um, get the Kristen Sinema seat that who's leaving and not um, going running for a re-election. So she's hoping to get a Republican in that seat. So I looked into that. And um, also Montana, John Tester, he's a Democrat. He's a senator from Montana, and he is running for re-election against uh, Republican Tim Sheehy. And Montana, as you can imagine, is a very Republican state. But John Tester has been there for a long time, and he's been re-elected several times. So we're gonna, I'm going to look into that and see, because I think it's going to be a real tough, uh, tough run for him. And in the past, Australia has, <laughs> it's been a constant on my channel, this image I have of, um, I'll explain to you, but I also looked into that to see where that shows up now, because things change, images change, uh, energies change, free will converts things as, you know, as we all can see now with the uh, politics and how things have been, energy is shifting, so. And I think that is it. So, um, yeah, thanks again for all those you who subscribe and stick around and enjoy my channel. I really appreciate it. And uh, let's get started. All right, I'm going to start off with Google. Um, yes, there's a lawsuit against the monopoly of the Googleness. I personally like Google. That's my favorite. But I understand too much power. And with it comes great responsibility. Isn't that what Uncle Ben said to Spider-Man? I don't even know the boy's name in real life. Anyway, yes. And I don't know if they're taking their responsibility wisely. So I looked into Google and what I got image-wise this year. So what I do, sometimes I look on timelines and that helps me see things. And I got into Google's energy. I went, I'm Google. And I look down the road, 2024. And all I see is like, if you can imagine a spotlight with, uh, it's not bright white light, but it's like a foggy blanket and it shoots off and goes like this towards the end of the, the uh, year. So nothing's stopping them right now. They are on track. And in fact, they're expanding, expanding, expanding. I don't know if it has to do with, it just popped in my head that maybe it has to do with expanding in other parts of the world that... They haven't been able to, or they're fighting against um, Queen of Swords. Oh, Five of Swords. Hmm. See this 
she's looking out into the distance. Let's expand out there, but then five of swords. Looks like they might be doing it in the not the most ethical way. So next year, I looked into 2025 for Google. I don't think anything's going to happen. I think there's going to be lawsuits. There's going to be appeals. I mean, there is going to be lawsuits. The government's suing them for monopoly. So 2026, something at the end of 25 and into 26, I see that white light or that foggy blanket no longer. So there's some clearer skies or clearness that, that's gone towards the end of 25, after like November, so late, and in 26. So whatever occurs, they are going to, I think, time changes, you know, time is a funny thing. But I do think they might lose this uh, lawsuit, and they're going to have to make changes and rein back in some of that foggy blanket that they have going all over. Okay, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, Ireland. Now, <laughs> so when I I meditate on it, and I just it popped in my head. I wasn't thinking of the UK because sometimes I see the UK and I and France and all of Europe and different things in the countries and how they relate. But for some reason, when I'm thinking about Ireland, I always think of a white tablecloth, like a table setting, and like a nice linen tablecloth. If you go to a nice restaurant because you know food anyway uh but there's a space there and between Ireland and the UK is so say you took that tablecloth and you bent it up and went and like made it into a wall so here's UK and here's Ireland and there's like this tablecloth made and it's a wall so it feels it doesn't feel bad it just feels protectionistic and this table has lots of room on it there's place settings over here but this tablecloth has lots of white free space for some reason they don't want to put anything in that space so maybe they're cutting off immigration they're cutting off some sort of treaty or some sort of governmental agency you know, back and forth, whatever it is, discussion, but it's white. It's always been white in Ireland, you know, Emerald Isle. Why would it be white? I don't know. But um, I'm going to pull a card real quick to see if what this is about, and maybe I'll get an understanding. King of Swords. This is being very cautious, careful, thoughtful, um, uh, making sure we do all the right things exactly. So they have some fears about maintaining their wealth or maintaining the, um, you know, the budget. You know, Ten of Pentacles is, and you notice the family. So they're sort of thinking of themselves as separate and whole. And we need to keep this wall up. And they're being very cautious and careful and to the point of, you know, unemotional. It's just super, like, clear cut. This one, I feel like I want to, yeah, same idea. Four of Pentacles. This is, see her? She's got this, uh, She's Four of Pentacles is about maintaining what you have, holding on to the money, being a little miserly, um, being a little fearful. So there's something about Ireland that is whoever's, um, you know, entities in the government, they are not letting, they're holding on to what they have. I think they're afraid things are going to get diluted or um, budget's going to get sucked up, or they're going to have to put a lot of money out. So maybe some of you might know what that means. But it's between specifically between Ireland and the UK. That I, I mean England, you know, the British Isle. Right there between them. But Ireland has room, and I think there might be some discussions like, why don't you take some of these people things, uh, help us out? No, nope. they're trying to keep everything pristine and good. That's... What the image I got, you know, take it. It's for entertainment purposes. Okay. Now the democratic national convention is next week and, um, Mercury's retrograde. It's right. We're right smack dab in the middle of it. And it will be then. And 
when that happens, communication, um, not always, but communications, computers, transportation, things that move from one place to the other, air, travel, speaking, emails, texts, um, electronics, things that travel, um, cause Mercury and Hermes, you know, with the communication and traveling and, um, messengers messaging. I think it's going to be okay, but I did feel there is going to be some glitches, but for the whole general mood is going to be good. I looked into protests outside of the building. Uh, I feel like, you know, I'm originally from outside of Chicago in Northwest Indiana. So I, I, I kind of have a f understand the vibe of that, the downtown and in some of the areas really sketchy, but I don't think where they're going to be, it's going to be difficult. I think the, the police are going to have it locked down pretty well. There's going to be some protests outside. And I do see when I'm standing at the podium in the convention hall over there, I do see somebody, there's a pocket of people that are protesting in the Democratic Party. And I don't know if they're far, they're far left, and maybe it has to do with Israel and Gaza, or um, they just want their voices heard. They just want to be validated, as most people who are protesting, because they, well, they want change, but they feel like they're not being validated because, and they're kind of being squashed over there. I don't, I feel like, like, they're going, okay, put them off to the side. Not that whoever's on the podium is saying to do that, but the powers that be within the convention center are like, Shh, get out of here. Go, go, keep your mouth shut over there. Ultimately, it's going to be fine. Harris Walls, it's going to be a big party. Everything's going to be good. There will be some protesting outside as well. Chariots, things moving quickly. King of Cups, some emotional stuff. Strength. So... I'm taking this in consideration like police and having this barrier, making sure nothing bad happens. Page of Swords. Um, I do feel like it's going to be fine, but there will be some. I can picture like, like people blowing up things. And I don't think like big blowing up, but like, you know, smoke. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, but there are people that just want to, that love, you know, anarchists, they love to break up stuff. They just like to do it so they can be seen. It's like that. Yeah. And it, and it could be again related to the Middle East conflict, war, and Gaza and Israel's conflict. I think that's related. And I don't feel like they're from Chicago. Whoever this is outside, they're coming from outside, from another part of the country. Take it or leave it. Hopefully everybody, there won't be any, people won't get hurt. Um, yeah, so I did see, and there's some cyber. I do think some somebody might get in and do something cyber-wise, cyber attacky kind of thing to, to try and disrupt it as well. Besides a physical protest, I do feel like there might be an attempt to do that. I feel like there's a lot of people working to keep that out. But that's a, something else that I, I saw kind of into Australia. Now, in the past, uh, <laughs> there's a few of my viewers or, yeah, viewers that are from Australia that have come along on this journey with me. I saw this, like, Australia is a continent or an island. And this Southern Belle giant, like, hoop skirt. And she's throwing this shawl across the whole continent or country. And it has these black dots all over it. And thought of that originally, I thought, well, it feels so 1860s or 1850s, like old timey time, you know, during a period of time when women would wear those kind of big dresses. There's something this time I got a little bit more clarity about that. I in, in the past, I thought those holes were mining and they still probably are. I do feel like they're digging. But this attitude of this energy 
is so it's like embedded in the dirt. Same as Haiti. There's I mean, side note, Haiti is there's so much anger and blood and uh, history and hatred in that dirt that it has to almost be excavated and completely dug up and removed. It's the same. It's not the same thing in Australia, but I do feel like the history and I don't know, maybe it has to do with slavery or the history of the colonialization prisons. I know a lot of people were shipped there, but the land is owned. It feels like there's very old ideas embedded in, t- in this land. And I think that's what that lady's about. She's about that history and it's, and it's embedded. It's not like a solid, but it's embedded all over the place. I do feel like the indigenous people are being pushed out to the edges. I see their, um, where they live, you know, their communities. And I, I know that's not accurate because they're not on the edges perhaps, but I do feel like symbolically they are being pushed out and out and out. And the mining, the industrialization of the land, uh, stripping it, that's, it's like this old idea and it's very embedded. Like somebody's got power that is calling the shot somewhere. And it's, it's a very long history. And I know there's new countries like China and other countries that are coming in there to do that, but they're in conjunction with this energy, this old energy. It's almost like it's conducive. Maybe because you've had resources there. Maybe because you've always mined there. Maybe because that's just a thing that happens there. But it feels like it's really hard to stop. It feels like if you want to clear clear it out, it, I don't see it anytime soon happening. So this lady with her spots and her mining is going to continue. The other thing which I saw, which is, I don't know what it means. There's, you know how when you light, there's paper lanterns, you light them and they flow up into the sky and they burn up. I saw a big sea of them lit, beautiful. It's a beautiful picture, burning lanterns going up. So normally I would say, because a lot of people will say you make a wish or you send it off and whatever, maybe it's on New Year's or whatever you do that. Um, and a celebration. In this situation, I related it to, you know, growing up in Northwest Indiana, it's surrounded by refineries. And I picture the refinery stacks burning off the excess, I don't know, fuel or whatever it is they knew, need in production of refining oil. It's the same kind of feeling I get. Um, so maybe it's just related to that same mining thing, but there's, um, and it, um, a release of this gas. It looks pretty. So maybe there's something that people aren't aware of that it may look nice or people are saying it's this and it's fine, but it's actually, and I'm, I'm smelling that smell. If you've ever gone through an area that has refineries, it smells like a sulfury, stinky egg smell. And I'm smelling that smell. So that's telling me that it's, it's going up into the atmosphere. So Australia, I don't know what to tell you. Let's see. And I don't feel like it's going to change anytime soon. Um, There's money, a lot of money involved. And you're kind of stuck, kind of trapped a little bit. See, it says love there. And the love is trying to get out. But uh, It doesn't mean it can't happen for right now. I'm not seeing any big changes. I almost feel like it's a lot of money being made. Okay, let's look into... <laughs> so J.D. Vance, I, in the past, you know, I've seen... Uh, I show a picture of Trump's cake. It's broken and it's melting. Trump's... Um, Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, their unlikely partnership is... Uh, it changes all the time. Every time I look at the images together, I see Trump's broken cake on the ground, which is chocolate with an orange cake, and it tastes like orange and has little gold flakes. But it's the chunks are, are kind of melting into the ground. And J.D. Vance used to be like a 
a gray blob around him and he didn't have much form. And then he had some sticks and he was kind of trying to prop up Trump facing Trump. Now I see him facing outward, like he's protecting Trump, like he's got his arms around him like this. And he's going, you know, facing into the public, which I find interesting. I guess maybe that feels like he's more confident. Or he's feels like he has uh, the strength and they're calling upon him the you know, the Republican Party's calling upon him to do what he can to protect him and speak for him, Trump, in a way. Last time I said, I was talking about how the Republican, his strategy people, his strategists or his aides, Trump's aides, were trying to keep him on task and train him to stay focused. Obviously, it hasn't really worked because he can stay focused for literally like a minute and a half. And then the other 58 and a half minutes are ramblings about random things and somebody said no it's not going to happen old dog new tricks kind of thing which it's true but they're trying I do see them trying uh but uh so I see JD Vance um oh I wanted to say that besides do you realize Pence and Vance five letters Pence P-E-N-C-E Vance V-A-N-C-E and Trump, all one syllable. Walls is one syllable. Harris is the only two syllable word. But I was look, thinking about all the past presidents. This is a really, you know, non consequential thing, but one syllable or two syllables in their names, most of them, except for Barack Obama. Obama is three. I don't know. Very interesting. Thinking um, Carter, Clinton. Bush, Nixon, Kennedy is three. So Johnson is two, one and two. So the two big Democratic presidents, besides Clinton and uh, Jimmy Carter, where Obama and Kennedy, they had a big impact on the country. Roosevelt, that's three, but long time. Anyway, I'm wondering if people's names have something to do with I'm sure it does, how they get, you know, people find that simpler. Americans like simple things. Americans do, don't like complicated things. And I'm not, <clears throat> it's just because it's just the way it is. So instead of Kentucky Fried Chicken, it's KFC. You know, stuff like that. Anyway, moving on. All right, so now... um Oh, yeah. The next time I'm going to do a video on talking to our friends about politics. In the past, I've said we are going to get back together. We are going to be united as Americans. It will change. It will go back. It, I promise it. it's going to. Right now, and as the pressure builds before the election, it feels like, like it won't. But I think that period previously, it was higher energy like four years ago. This is less. It's less stressful this year, but there are people still entrenched. So I'm going to do a video about how to talk to your neighbors and family and friends or not talk to them. And I, I'll throw out some ideas and maybe they'll help. Maybe they won't. But I, I just thought that would be helpful in general as we move towards this very tense time. Okay. All right. So let's go back to, okay, so these races, Senate races in Arizona. I saw Carrie Lake. Um, <laughs> she was a, a TV personality on, on Fox in the Morning, the news journalist. I mean, she probably has a degree in journalism, but she's very polished. And there's a joke about she always has a fuzzy, you know, screen or camera filter. <laughs> but she's very polished and she knows how to be seen on camera. So she's very good at it. Now, Ruben Gallego... He's your competition. He's the Democratic nominee in Arizona. So what I did see is for Carrie Lake, she's a, like I said, a gung-ho dynamo. She doesn't give up. She's an election denier. Um, she's a big Trump supporter. I saw her in a clear box, like that six feet tall, four feet wide, all around, and it goes all the way to the ground. And she, it's clear. It's like completely glass, no top, but 
she's having to carry it around with her everywhere she goes. Like she's in this box. It's invisible or it's clear, but it's it's heavy and it's like necessary for her. She's created this box. We can't maybe um, see it as well as she does. She knows that there's this box she's put herself in, but she doesn't want to leave the box behind. And maybe the box is related to supporting Trump, uh, election denying, and maybe she is already committed to that. And it's a Republican stance, a MAGA stance, and she knows she needs those voters. Perhaps that's it. But she's this invisible box is being carried around with her. Carrie, Carrie, Carrie. Okay. Anyway, Carrie Lake, Carrie in box. But now Ruben Gallegos, I saw him as a lovely chocolate bar, milk chocolate with a caramel. Um, and he wasn't anything fancy. He was like your basic chocolate bar with caramel inside. And I did see that she, her box is cold and kind of tasteless and his is kind of good and delicious. So I think it's going to be super tight. I could not pick a winner, but his tastes better. And I do feel that he a lean his way right now in August, <laughs> three months to go or four months to go. No, three months. So I think he might win. Um, yeah, because I know the Democratic ticket's going to be more popular this year than the Republican tickets. People are not a fan. Happening, the Democrats will more likely win most of the, they're going to, it is going to be kind of a blue wave, maybe a little blue wave. <laughs> All right, John Tester and, and versus Tim Sheehy in Montana. I was worried about John Tester, um, and he reminded me, I don't know, anybody, well, if you have, I had this history teacher in high school, Mr. Ruff, and he wore his hair like he would have in, in the 40s or 50s. Flat top, really narrow, like high and tight, as they say, you Marines, you know. And, but he was heavier and he would reenact history, history events, you know, more different things. He wore the same suit every day, same little tie, but he, uh, this John Tester always reminds me of him a little bit chunkier, skinny tie, very short hair, kind of a flat top, I think. And, uh, John Tester, I think has a lot of goodwill behind him, even though he's one in a, a Montana, um, you know, Republican state. So when I, when I got into his energy, I saw him, it was heavy. It felt heavy. And I, there's a ton of people over here on the right side. I don't know if right meaning Republican or right meaning, maybe that's it. Maybe it's Republicans that he's carrying, but it's like, He's walking through water, but it's so heavy. And he's trying to carry all these people. He's heavy. They're heavy. The water's kind of thick. And he's sludging along, trudging along through this water and or mud or whatever it is. That's it's hard. It's hard to get through. And and then I see Tim Sheehy, thin, lithe, fast lighter in color as well and he's zipping along and I feel like he has no encumbrances he's free and easy and he's just racing I know um John Tester is like about three times the money that um Tim Sheehy has but he's a Republican but he's over here and he doesn't have any he's just like like a bolt going that way but when I get to the election John Tester has got all these people with him and they could be voters. It could be support. It was hard. This race is hard. And, and I think ultimately he'll win. I think <laughs> entertainment purposes only. And these are my musings and my visions, but I feel like it's, it's just a lot. He's bringing a lot with him. He makes it there, but it's so much work. And this guy is zipping along and going really fast. But I, 
I feel like he's got some of the state um, leadership on his side. That's there, but there's not that many of them. And I know they have power, but this is all the people over here, like regular people, you and me people. They're over there. So he's gathering them up. So I felt like it was like a, a warrior kind of thing. Like John Tester's like fighting in a war. Like I got, I'm going to do this. He's working towards his Medal of Honor and this guy over here, even though he's a like Navy pilot, he's a, in the service. He just, or he was, he's just not the same. It's not the same vibe. So as of right now, I see John Tester winning. Maybe because I like him and he reminds me of Mr. Ruff, who I thought was super boring, <laughs> but I just, I still remember him to this day. Okay. October 1st, Vance and Walls are supposed to debate, right? And so what I, this is going to be funny, kind of a, I don't know what occurred to me. J.D. Vance, I saw, <laughs> do you know, when you on Halloween, you have those fake teeth, those pl cheap plastic teeth, and you put in fake blood. That's what I saw. But I see a pool of blood around J.D. Vance, like it's coming out of his mouth. Not literally, but it's around him. But I see these fake teeth, like he's a giant mouth of fake teeth. Maybe because he has very, you know, his teeth are very prominent. When he smiles or laughs or it's scary, cringy, but the blood is on the ground. And this blood, fake blood, is kind of, when he's by Trump, I can see it kind of merging. And it doesn't, um, I don't know. It, it, it's a weird thing, chocolate cake and fake blood. I don't think I would like that. But anyway, J.D. Vance and Tim Walls, when I get into Vance's energy, I feel excited and I'm gonna like attack I'm gonna attack 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 I feel this excitement he's he's to my left walls is over here and I'm JD Vance and I can feel like I am just like on fire I'm gonna get him I'm gonna say everything and I'm gonna just you know basically like bite him in the neck and stab him and uh and then when I get into Tim Walls's energy I feel a little nervous I feel excited but a little nervous. I feel like there's a lot of pressure on him. I, I feel, or he feels the pressure. It's almost like JD Vance is oblivious. He's like, but Tim Walls feels the impact that this could have. But once he gets in there, it reminds him of kind of a football game or coaching. And it's an intellectual exercise, but it's not, uh, it's not like a physical game, but it, it, he's he gets excited eventually he gets into the rhythm but initially I feel like he goes okay and he's a little bit a little anxious about going in and you can't tell by looking at him but that's the impression that I got now um I feel like it was very loud even though they probably have some cutoff things you know after two minutes I feel like there'll be a lot of yelling and a lot of loudness um and I don't necessarily feel like there's going to be a clear winner. I feel like it might be, you know, some walls will get some hits on him and Vance will, you know, make contact, you know, that kind of thing. He'll get some hits on walls. I think it may, it may be not accurate or they'll be misleading on actually on both sides, but I feel like they will make some points. Both of them will make points. Um, yeah, I don't feel like it's, I think it's going to be kind of a draw. There'll be people saying on both sides that'll be. Um, and then the media, they'll say, you know, that they'll find good on both sides or bad on both sides, whatever. All right. So now Trump versus Harris. In the past, I really... I don't know if Harris should debate Trump only because he doesn't play fair, right? And supposedly, is it September 10th? Or she agreed. Um, but it's not logical what he says, what he'll say or talk about or yell about. It's not logical. So she can't really argue with that or come back with a definitive 
statement because it, he'll all she would have to rearrange the history or truth to answer it and it so what i saw was in the past again with trump's cake he's broken in pieces and she's like a big bowl of root vegetables that have been mashed that are delicious and they're growing because she's gathering people and she has a fork she has a fork in that bowl she takes that fork and she goes and she gets a big chunk of cake and flings it i feel like that's there's that she gets a big chunk and she flings it but as he's melting she can't grab she might get one or two good jabs in jabs but he's melting so you can't it's like picking up soup with a fork you can't really do it so I feel like that's going to happen so she's going to try and attack him and spear him and stab him with the fork and pull some things but he's like elusive and melty and can't get me and that kind of stuff <laughs> um yeah so I don't know ultimately I think it'll be discussed you know on the comedy night shows you know like Jimmy Fallon or Stephen Colbert but will it help people m change their vote see them compared independent voters people that haven't decided um, yeah, I think it will. Um, there will be some liberal policies that she's coming out with that he can put, he can, uh, attack her on. That'll keep some people from voting for her in the independent range, but she's just going to look more stable. And solid, honestly, because his cake is melting. <laughs> uh, I think that's it. All right. You guys take care. Uh, thanks again for stopping by. Till next time.